For this project, we're going to be taking this twin reflex 35 millimeter camera and make it digital using a Raspberry Pi. What? It's kind of incredible to realize that the first photograph was taken 200 years ago. It was taken by Joseph Nicephore Niepce, a French teacher turned scientist. Yes, that is the first photograph. But on the bright side, selfies back then were pretty spectacular. So two centuries in, we've seen TLRs turn into DSLRs and silver chloride turn into pixels. So in honor of that, who am I kidding? I'm not doing this in honor of anything. I thought it would be a good idea to take this vintage twin reflex 35 millimeter camera and turn it into a digital camera. Why would anyone in their ever loving cotton picking mind ever want to do this? Consider this a crash course in modding. All right, let's channel our inner hipster and get snappy. For the hardware side of things, the basic must-haves are a camera module, something to process the images from that camera, a screen to view those images on, some type of button to snap the pictures, and something to power it. Oh, and it all needs to be small enough to fit inside this camera case. My first thought was to use a teeny tiny camera to process the images. Computers can be that tiny? Can I not say tiny without my voice going up? Absolutely they can doubting person. Here are a few different options of tiny computers that'll do the job. And those of you that are longtime viewers already know which one I'm gonna choose. Pi Zero, I choose you. The Pi Zero is ideal because of its small footprint, input output pins, and its integrated webcam connection. Now for the LCD screen. Before we can choose one of those, we first have to decide where we're gonna put it. The back hatch is a good option, and I could put up to a three inch screen there. But the twin reflex camera has a built in viewfinder, so I thought it'd be cool to repurpose that. And a 1.8 inch screen works perfectly. To hook the LCD up to the Pi Zero, you can wire it directly to the input output pins like this. And then tossing in a button to eventually trigger the camera, the wiring should look something like this. Lastly, we'll need a way to power it, and these emergency cell phone chargers are a really good option. To easily turn it off and on, I added a simple button switch. Now, I know this isn't the proper way to power down a Raspberry Pi, but it'll work for now. After my terrible attempt at a paint job, never trust a paint pen, I gutted all the unnecessary parts from the camera and laid out where all the parts were gonna be. Then I used a Dremel to remove any excess plastic and customize the fit. I thought this lever mechanism on the camera was cool, so I rigged up my button so that it was triggered every time the lever is pressed, and then I hot glued it into place. The camera board just happened to fit perfectly in the lens holder. And then for the on-off switch, I was able to retrofit one of these dials so that it could be pushed for on and off functionality. Hot gluing everything into place, I realized a grievous error. I didn't account for the cables being plugged into the Pi. Okay, so what are some possible workarounds? Well, we could use the input-output pins to power it, but those pins are already being used to power the LCD. So another possible workaround would be to strip some wire and solder it to the opposite side of the power connector, where these PP1 and PP6 connectors are. These are for the positive and negative wires, respectively. Same thing applies for the USB port. We can strip the wires from the existing cable and connect the power wires to the power connectors and the data wires to the PP2 and PP3 connectors like this. Okay, now we can hot glue everything into place and fit it all together. From the outside, it still looks like a nice vintage camera, minus my terrible paint job. But opening up the back will give you access to use the Pi as normal, connecting a USB hub and a monitor and whatever else you need. But at the moment, it's nothing more than a glorified Raspberry Pi case. Now we need to add some camera functionality, which I'll cover in my next video. I can feel your hate vibes. Those are hate vibes. In the meantime, if you're cavalier enough, you could try to write your own camera program. And if you're successful, please share it with us in the comments below and I may feature you on my next video. What ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. 
Click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to get some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.